It's good to see everybody here this morning. We got a special guest, and we're going to bring him up. And um, I'm sorry, guys. I apologize in advance for what's going to take place in the next few minutes. So um, do not do this on television. And um, if you had young children, you might want to escort them out of the room. I'm just kidding. So, so let's bring Brad up in a more serious, silly um, way. So go ahead and bring Brad up for us. Whoa. All right. Yeah, what? There you go. That was a good transition. Hey. Was nice that when, back. Was that what were you doing with the chainsaw? No, nope, I'm sorry. I was beaming in. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I saw you with the chainsaw, but I didn't know what I was seeing. Could, could you Juggling. What? Juggling. Juggle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, uh, that'd be a bad paper cut, though, Brad. Well, you'd have to watch it on pay per view. So, what can I say? Uh, who would pay for that, though? I mean, yeah. Anyway, someone already saw it. So, anyways, hey, so uh, Brad, what's up with you? What's your story, man? Where are you from? What's up with you? Oh, we're gonna jump into it, huh? Yeah, we're okay, gonna good. get into. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I forgot to, to say this. I know a lot of people thought that Brad Newton, the bodybuilder, was gonna be with us today. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm sorry to disappoint, guys, but uh, here's here's uh, the Brad Newton, the other guy. What, what but, makes you think I'm not a bodybuilder? What is what's up with that? Uh, nothing, nothing. Yeah, nothing. You're you're swollen. <laughs> yep, yeah, I get it. It's uh, too many uh, peanut butter uh, cups, is what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's, and, and it's the. What is it, the COVID ten or, or is it now the COVID fifty pounds? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm I'm going up the the ladder. I started at forty five and I'm up to fifty now. Uh, oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Is that L M B O? Is what is that? Is that laugh my butt off? Is that what that is? Yeah. Laugh my butt off. Okay, good. I'm glad we got Danielle on board. Yeah, that's that's my sister. I apologize for everything she's gonna say. I'm not worried about it. At least I'm she's sorry. saying something. Bad. It runs in the family, man. I'm telling you. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. She, she's a lot smarter than I am. I'm not too bright, but that's okay. All the self deprecation. I yeah. Tell you. Yeah. I try to do that on purpose. You know, but, but you tell me that I can't be funny on purpose because people know it. So you can't do that. Just be yourself. Isn't yeah. that what it's all about? That it, so tell us about you. What, what makes you tick? What? Uh, well, God makes me tick, but, um, no, I was, uh, born in Chicago, uh, moved to Dallas in 1963, uh, about a month or so before Kennedy was assassinated, believe it or not. Um, a cool story from that is that, um, a few weeks after the assassination, uh, we had two, um, FBI agents knock on our door and it was like, it was pretty cool. And they had the black, you know, just think about, you know, like men in black, little skinny black ties and all that. And it was like, yeah, we just need have a couple questions for y'all. And they didn't say y'all. Um, and uh, it turned out there was some kind of rumor going around the church that we were attending. And they just wanted to check, why why did you guys move here from Chicago? Blah, blah, blah. And so my mom thought it was the coolest thing ever. So uh, anyway, so that's that's a little story. So, about so that. you continued your, your life of um, criminal activity since that day? Is that of course. Of yeah, oh, yeah, especially and, in college. And that landed yeah. you in prison, right? So tell us, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, boy, you are pushing the wrong buttons here. Yeah, well, um, no, I never went to prison. Um, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I went to school uh, for a couple of years. Uh had to drop out because if my uh, GPA was an ERA, I'd be leading the league. Um, and then finally figured out what I wanted to do after five years of just messing around and uh, went back to school and became an elementary school teacher. So uh, that I did for 12 years. And um, then we uh, connected up uh, to, with uh, improv and, and everything is where we're going to probably be headed in the rest of this conversation. And so, so you you are a man of passion, right? I mean, you've been passionate about so many things. But you said in our pre conversation, you were talking about having a a passion with a purpose. So, can you kind of unpack that a little bit for us? What, what what do you mean by that? Well, I'm mean, you know, it's it, 
whatever God lays on your heart for what your talents and your passions are, um, you know, you can go off in any direction you want with that. But if it's connected to a purpose, like when um, when I was I was when I was first starting, uh, let me see, let me start that again. Between my two uh, stints in college, um, working at Sears, uh, I used my day off to go to a daycare center in South Dallas and start working with kids. And then right. I said, this is something I would love to do is teach. And so the passion for teaching and for kids um, and then became the purpose that drove me back to college and then onward to um, working in Carrollton Farmers Branch. So, uh, and then from there, uh, with with the improv, uh, again, the, the teaching aspect, uh, forming Kidprov in 1991, uh, going into schools using improv as a teaching tool. So at first, I, I was not a performer. I was the MC that would pull the improv. We had incredible improvisers that love kids. That's what, their passion, their purpose. And we had a team of people that were really had that single focus. So you're saying your purpose can't be to make a lot of money or to be famous. And some people do have that purpose, you know, and that, and you said that that's self, you know, uh, passion without purpose is self is what you said. Uh, it, it definitely is. I mean, it is truly about, you know, you just pursue your passions. Um, but it, if it doesn't affect other people, if it doesn't make a difference, um, then why are you doing it other than to uh, scratch your own itch? You know, it's, uh, you see a lot of that. And especially right now, I mean, it's politics is, you know, uh, what what else? Uh, athlete, athletes, a lot of athletes are, that's what they're all about is themselves. And so um, if, if if everybody, you know, found their passion and uh, just what, what really stirs their heart uh, and then lo and look for where that can make a difference, you know, and then there's your purpose. And you said your a lot your passion as a kid was baseball. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. How that uh, led to you eventually taking pictures for the Rangers. That's a cool story. Yeah. Um, well, you know, just we had a camera. My dad was had, had cameras around the house, so we would take pictures and just you know mess around. We'd make uh, movies and stuff like that. And you know, I was the uh, the uh, photographer for the annual um, in high school, and uh, then kind of drop photography well it's interesting because of all the five of the five years i was in college i only flunked one course and of course that was photography photography, <laughs> photography right so i'm kind of a learn by doing kind of guy um but uh when i started teaching in the early 80s uh they were at arlington stadium which was two stadiums ago which is bizarre to think Whoa. um they had an old timers game and there were people there, there were players there that um, I, th they were my heroes, the Ernie Banks and Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, those guys. So I went to a small newspaper in Carrollton and I said, hey, uh, I teach in the district. So, you know, I've got some good references. Uh, if I go out and shoot some pictures and write a little article for you, would you give me, a, you know, get me a, out there a press pass? And so I went out there and had that opportunity. And over the next few years, I worked for that newspaper just you know a couple times a year or whatever um but you know as as i got out there and got more and more uh in tune to what i would need as a photographer started buying more equipment and uh then in 85 applied for the job with the rangers and uh and got it and worked there from you know 85 to through 2012 so got a couple of world series a few all-star games under my belt uh worked for baseball card companies uh, which was, you know, that's what I collected. I still have all my baseball cards from when I was a kid. So um, I'm wow. I'm sitting on uh, some pretty interesting stuff. Well, not right now, but yeah, I was just gonna say you need to kind of high up. You know, when I was a kid, I, I collected baseball cards, but I didn't know what I was doing. You know, it's like okay, this looks cool, and I had some of those. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So that's what was that in the '90s. Yeah, back back in the nineties, that was probably yeah. um, a while um, after your first uh, experience with baseball. So, yeah, just a, a little bit, but that yeah, I was I was shooting uh, for card companies in the late eighties and through the early nineties. So you might have some of my pictures. Yeah. Oh, that's.
I didn't know that. I mean, and you also said that you 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 did some spot pictures for the Cowboys and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in the in the photography business, a lot of times it's it's all about who you know and how right. you treat people. So the uh, the uh, public relations director for the um, I mean, excuse me, not the public relations, but the um, director of publications. Totally different. Right. There you go. Um, I I worked with him with the Rangers. He moved to the Cowboys, so he brought me along. So. Every year for the last five years, except COVID's ruined it this year, uh, shoot wow. portraits for uh, the program of the of the Cowboys, and it's interesting because you think that that you'd have a lot of like mean people, but they're all just the sweetest guys, yeah. good guys. But we want to do some really you know like intense pictures, yeah. right? So you get a, you got this incredibly like stark, um, dramatic lighting, and and you know, I would say, yeah. okay, now there's a big. 350 pound guys and I said, wow. all right, get, you know, let me give you, give me that look. So they'll get there and they'll go, hey, wait a minute now. No, just, just a second. And they would just crack up almost every time. So That's those, are the, those now, are the best pictures. I've seen some of your pictures of, of some of the Cowboys, very great lighting. They're just, they, they like alive. Yeah. So yeah. It's a lot of fun. Pictures? What's, what's your website? So people can go look at that later. Uh, B, bnphoto.com. Bnphoto.com to check yeah. that out. There's some really cool pictures of, of um, the Cowboys and then the other uh, the Rangers. And uh, if you follow him on Facebook, I'm I'm not sure if he's going to let everybody in on his Facebook. That, <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Some cool photos on there. Uh, so, anyways, I, I know that that's only part of who you are, and and that's remarkable. That you're a teacher at heart, right? Yeah, definitely. So uh, you're teaching for what district were you in? I was in Carrollton Farmers Branch. And you said that you were doing a, a specific task that they asked you to do in that. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, they uh, they started a program in 85 um, called uh, the LEAP program, which was if you have a they had the regular gifted program and then they had those kids up here that really um, their needs had not been met in the regular uh, gifted program. Right. So uh, they pulled all those kids to a, to uh, one school, uh, fifth and sixth graders. And uh, about three days before school started, they needed one more teacher. And they and so I got the call and said, hey, Brad, I think you'd be interested in working with these fifth and sixth graders. We have no books and we have no curriculum. So talk about improvising. <laughs> that's that's wow. where it started. But, you know, there are certain decisions that you make in your life that you kind of step off and faith, um, and that was one of them. And I, that was one of the best decisions I've made in my life because of what I got to experience and create. Uh, the people I met, um, actually my late wife started teaching at that school. That's where I met her. Oh, really? So yeah, yeah. So she just happened to, to be at that school. So, so y'all just like go in the teacher's lounge together and hang out and, you know, bring actually, a flower? No. Really? No, it was, it was not that at all. It was uh, actually we she taught kindergarten. I taught, you know, the gifted sixth graders. So there were no two curriculums that were farther apart, but there right. were no two classrooms that had the more. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Similar uh, energies. Yeah. Uh, okay. So anyway, it, it was uh, it wasn't until that next summer that, that we uh, we connected. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, it was God talking the whole time, even though at that point I wasn't a Christian. So right. uh, I, I knew something was going on here because it was nothing I did. Well, what, what brought you to, to faith in Christ? I didn't ask you this, but um, yeah, what, I'd like to know that. That's pretty interesting. Well, it was my my uh, my late wife. Um, and just to unpack that for a second, uh, yeah. Cecilia, we we were married about almost 17 years and she passed away from a brain hemorrhage. So uh, oh, no. that was twelve. that was, gosh, 12 years ago. And. Uh, I've been remarried. Thank you, God, for uh, I got an yeah. amazing wife now, uh, Susanna. And uh, so, again, God has blessed me twice. But, but so, Cecilia, so had to pay your new wife. I had to pay my wife uh, quite a, quite a bit to marry me. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think you had to pay yours any. I mean, you're just such a great guy to live with. Probably. No, I just take her pictures all the time. So. Yeah, there you go. That's that's good. <laughs> uh, you got um, out on that. I had to pay my wife, so that's that's not that's not. Hey, I'm, you know, it's again passion with a purpose, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, Cecilia, um, it was it was about 
uh, five or six years into our marriage. And she just uh, exhibited who Christ was and that's just accepting me and um, just living out Christ. She never forced it on me. She said we didn't need to go. We did need to go to a, a church once we got married because we had two stepkids in uh, you know nine and 11. So they needed a church to go to. So we went to the church I played softball for because that's about uh, as close to church as I got yeah, so, hey, on the hey, softball hey, field. At least the Lord but, used that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, they they understood that. So uh, after I gave my life to Christ, it was Easter Sunday on 19, in 1997. Uh, on my way driving to the to the Ranger game, I remember the moment. But a few months later, after I understood the world of um, equally yoked, uh, I uh, I said, Cecilia, why, why did you marry me? Because I wasn't a Christian when we got married. Equally yoked, yada yada. So she looked at me right. with this kind of this look like this, like you were a Christian, you just didn't know it. <laughs> Talk about faith! Wow, that's powerful stuff. So um, yeah. That that was it was a very slow trek to get there, and and then you said she had a brain hemorrhage. That that must have been hard to, yeah. to deal with as a husband. It, she um, was gone in a matter of seconds, and um, yeah, it was because there was no goodbyes, there was no nothing. Uh, but um, that's when God really showed up, and I I mean I cannot tell you the kind of stuff that transpired. I mean I, I blogged for a whole year about the different things and it, I, I go back and read it now i said i didn't write that there's no way i could write that right and so i the holy spirit was just was just flowing through you know right the, the pen and paper um do you have do you have that blog still that maybe people might want to go read some of that what, it's what? uh it's it's not up anywhere no oh, okay. I, we, that was a, you know a long time ago right i mean i made a pdf on it and um but it's it i've shared it because i've had three four uh friends of mine have right. lost their lost their wives so it, it um that was my purpose you know i was put through right. this that time. So that i could help them go through it and the blog um i gave them a copy of it and that that helped them so uh it's it, it, those deep deep um valley of the shadow of death kind of things you know the right. really, really rough times turn right. out for me to be mountaintop experience right because uh, it, 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 the way God just completely enveloped me and the people around me that that came and, and exhibited what what true friendship and, and love and relationship is all about. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that that a lot of times when bad things happen, that's when you get knitted close together with people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I lost my mom and my dad and my brother, and, and those mm -hmm. were very trying times. But I still remember the people that that loved me during that time and put their arms around me and helped me through that. And uh, that I, I I will cherish those moments, even though it was yeah. in the valley. Uh, yeah. They were still beautiful uh, moments that I'll never forget. You know. Yep. yep. And, and, and meeting your new wife. So so tell us about that. I don't say new, but uh, your 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 wife now. Well, we've been married, uh, you know, five going on six years, and. Uh, you know, met her at church and uh, had, she has three daughters that are just amazing. It, it, being a step parent, I mean, I, I'll never have my own kids at this point right, uh, at my age, but that's okay because I was, you know, born to be a step parent, if you yeah. will. Uh, but to have those relationships that are not blood. Um, yeah. But I was listening to Dennis Prager the other day and he said, hey, blood really means nothing. It's about the relationship. It's about connectivity it's about love and those that can transcend blood absolutely and so these the, her three daughters are truly amazing and and yeah. uh, Su susanna is uh, is a major blessing in my life and um you know it's it's tough to to move from the fact that uh you know you're a widower and then going right. through that grieving process and then that the grieving process ended after five years or so but grief can come up every once in a while. I mean, I don't want to get too heavy here, but you know, grieving is a process. Grief is just a moment and you, right. know, you have memory or something that comes in and you just, you know, and I'm emotionally incontinent. I cry very easily. So uh, Susanna knows when, when I'm having a moment, if you will. And she is not uh, threatened by that, which I, I'm amazed at that. Yeah, it, that, that's what, what I've always thought, you know, how, um, 
widowers and, and widows are able to understand that their partner is going to miss their um, first wife or their first husband. And, and that yeah. is so, I think it, um, they have a special grace. You know what I mean, Brad? Yeah. Well said. Well hey, said. Be, yeah. be patient with you because you still love uh, your, your first wife. You, you love her dearly. Um, oh, but absolutely. Lord moved you into a new phase in your life. And as a stepdad, my, my wife's uh, dad is not her real dad. Okay. Um, but he is her bio, uh, her um, stepdad, but she loves him just like he was her, her dad. So we understand, you know, the relationship you have with your daughters. And it's probably very strong. I've seen pictures of you guys. Um, you guys look like a great, happy family. And I know there's probably moments in, in y'all's lives that... Oh, of course. Uh, y'all yeah. look great. I mean, uh, y'all look happy. And I'm praising the board for that grace that he's given to you. It's just... Yeah, it's it is amazing. Awesome. It's it's way beyond uh, anything yeah. human. And, and even I could see that in a picture, Brad. I, I really saw your family do just a photo. And, uh, you know, maybe that's why you take photos, because, you know, you're able to, to capture things that maybe, you know, people aren't there to see. Um, well, it's about, to me, you know, in, in, well, improv. I'm talking improv now, but yeah. photography is about relationships. And, you know, there's obviously the relationship of, you know, uh, F-stop to ISO to, um, you know, the shutter speed. But there's also the other side, and that is me connecting to you if i'm taking your picture and there's got to be some there's got to be something there you know or else the it yeah. just has no life to the image absolutely yeah that's right you're, you're not there just to take a photo but you're there to be a person behind the camera as well and, yep. and you said yep. and you're on your website that you like to to have that relationship with the person that you're 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 photographing and that mm -hmm. yeah it just it I, makes it so much easier how do you develop that, you know, in a few seconds, you know? Yeah, well, we don't develop film anymore. Um, you know, it's right, all right. digital. Um, no, so we don't fun. develop, there's no dark rooms anymore. We use right. laptops. We use computers now. Right. But, but when you're meeting them <laughs> in a dark alley, I'm just kidding. So when, when you're meeting them, how do you, you know, start the conversation? What do you, how does that work? You're just like, hey, I'm okay. here. I'm here. Um, it, it's conversational. I mean, it, it truly is. It's making people feel um, uh, not as uncomfortable because a lot of people are uncomfortable in front of the camera. So that's where, you know, my improv nature comes in and personality right. where, you know, you just meet the person in the moment and, uh, you know, you don't force them into anything. And it's almost like, just don't pay attention to me. Like when I'm shooting a wedding, it's like it's a bride and groom. Don't pay it. Just pay attention to each other. I'm just taking pictures of what you guys, um, your relationship. It has nothing to do with me, right? Because I'm just capturing you at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I had to, I had to tell I had to tell my my family to pay attention to me because I think they take your advice. Don't pay attention to me. I'm not here. Like, where's that guy? I am here. Wait, I'm just being just being stupid. Well, so, uh, um, you're very good at that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I like to be encouraged. I like to encourage. Hey, you said that you're here to make me look good. You, you're not doing that. I'm going to fire you. You're 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 out of here. Yeah. Okay. I, I you're, you're supposed to make me look good, but I know it's it's a hard it's a hard thing. There's a lot of material here. Uh, and you're using it all on yourself. Yeah, I know. Do you notice that? I'm trying not yeah. to. So. Um, Whose line is it anyways? This is going to segue us into improv. Tell us what the heck improv is anyway. Uh, well, uh, you know, just to, to kind of put a Go history put to it. Out. Put it out, Brad. I'm going to. I, I was looking at where I needed to jump in. But when I was teaching, I started going to a, a, a place called Comedy Sports, which yeah. is um, competitive improv. And I've always liked improv uh, going back to the days of Jonathan Richmond. Um, and... Uh, Jonathan Richmond. No, I meant Jonathan Winters. No, oh, Jonathan Richmond's a whole different story of improv. Anyway, uh, so I started using the games that they play um, in the uh, comedy sports and then started using them in my classroom. Um, improv is about being in the moment, about taking a suggestion from the audience and right. then going from there. Now, there's two kinds of improv. 
Uh, and then one's long form and one's short form. And short form is what I've been doing. And they're basically like whose line? There are little games or skits or forms. And then the audience gives a suggestion and they use that form, um, which we're going to be using one of those here in a little bit um, to uh, come up with, you know, a, a, a skit, right? Uh, when I teach my class about improv, I, I connect it to our spiritual aspect, the spiritual aspect of Christianity. But the bottom line is that you don't try and you don't try to be funny because improv is not about being funny. You said it, it's about making the other person look good, about setting the other person up. Because when you have your ideas and my ideas that we somehow have to make sense of, right? Um, right. It's connecting, you know, your box and my box, right? We talked about that earlier right. about out of the box thinking. I don't think that's a, that's a reality. It's out of my box thinking. And right. that's who you are. You know, and so when we connect our two boxes, all of a sudden I've got your info, you've got mine. And from that, we can, we can, you know, create this magic that happens on stage. And it's you know, truly, this, this live stream idea is set up like that. you know, there's your box on the right side. There's my box on, on the left side. And then we have the audience, also the boxes of, of the comments coming through and, and we're all able to, to think outside the box. But I think that. And not, not trying to get serious again, but in politics or religion or whatever conversation people want to have, I think that they're not willing to um, look at the other person's box. They just want to stay in, in their box and not think about, you know, what's Brad got to say that, that might add to this conversation, you know? Right. And I think that that's where um, where listening is so important and not having a pre-existing response rather than right. be, being listen listening to what you're saying and responding in the moment to right. who you are and what you're saying uh, rather than you know just having something set up that will make me look good or make my point look good or make right. my my point of view look good yeah because the idea is the the build a straw man make them look terrible so you can just rip them apart and make you look yeah, better. yeah. well and some improv is like that some people yeah where it gets it gets a uh, competitive nature of, right. uh, I want to be the funny one. I want to get the laugh. Uh, but it's a lot of times, you know, I love it when I'm with the guy I work with and I have for 30 something years, Sean, Sean is the best improv comedian I have ever seen. And I think Brian's still online and he can, he can give me a thumbs up on that one, but it's so much fun to set him up because he, he can knock it out of, he, I mean, he's a, he, he is a designated hitter par excellence. But it's so much fun to set him into that position that he can just knock it out of the park. Um, and that's, you know, that's just as vital as knocking it out of the park. So, well, we're talking about improv and uh, we, we have it set up to where we're going to play a little improv game here. And uh, yep. Brad, what, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to uh, play a game called The Professor and we're going to get Daniel involved in this in, in, in this game. So, um where, what position are you going to be in, Dan? You're going to be in that one right there? Okay. Yeah. So um, I think Christina has come up with some questions, and she's going to ask a question, and we're going to answer it improvisationally, one word at a time. So I'll start, um, and then I'll say one word, then Daniel say the next, then Josh will say the next, and it'll come back to me. So we'll just round robin it. Now, making sure that you understand that when um, when the question comes in, like, why is the sky blue, we got to take that question and turn it into a statement. So I would start the, and then Daniel, Sky, Josh is blue because, and then one word at a time, one word, Josh, one word at a time. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay too. I mean, that's the way it goes. I'm sorry. So one I, word like at a time. I like to talk. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, really? I didn't notice that either. Uh, okay. I'm in the right ministry, man. This is the ministry that the Lord's using me in. Okay, I, I see that. Now, is Daniel mic'd up okay? I mean, is he? He's on the Yeti, so he should be picked up pretty easily. Hello? Okay, say something, Daniel. Say so something. Daniel's loud. Okay, yeah, be nice and loud so we know what you're saying, okay? okay. Um, all right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Well, we're going to start with the <laughs> one of the questions I had. Why is the sky blue? Okay, I'm sorry. We use that as a demo. Come on, don't, oh, we don't okay. want to, come on, okay. let's take it to the well, next one. I got level. mine on a website, okay. Ah, we, no, 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 stop right now. <laughs> Put the paper down. Come on. No, don't think about the paper. 
Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. Why, what? What do you want to know? Why, what, right now? Why, just off the top of your head. Why is Daniel's hair blonde? Why is Daniel's hair blonde? Here we go. <laughs> Daniel, I need you. I need you, buddy. I need you. Here we go. You ready? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, he's good. Okay, so good. Daniel's hair he is blonde because aliens landed on it and <laughs> made something <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Okay, that's the answer. Okay, very good. Very good. All right. I think it made him laugh. Okay. All right. Christina, you're up again. Um, the ship has landed. Why is Homer Simpson yellow? Okay, you like colors, don't you? Yeah, yes. I do. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Homer very colorful language. Simpson. Oh, okay. He is yellow. Because Brad kept. It's face time with Instagram <laughs> popcorn. <laughs> I don't know where that is. I mean, what in the world? <laughs> that sentence fell apart. Didn't it? <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing about the professor. Is it really has to be a real sentence. <laughs> otherwise, it's just, uh, right. it's right. Right. yellow. Homer Simpson is yellow because Frank. Under where night tomorrow Friday and guacamole it just <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Do we have another one, Christina? Come on. Okay. Okay. Um, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Stop. 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 All right. This time I'm going to ask a question. Oh, I'll start, no. and Christina, you're going to be in the in this too. So <laughs> it'll come to me, oh, then to Christina, then to Daniel, uh, then to Josh. Back to me. All right. Okay. okay I got, got it. it. Okay, okay. Keep that. All right, so here we go. You ready? Why does Saturn have rings? I'm starting off. Saturn has rings because whenever it's married, the moon, um, the, no. the, the moon, it had baby <laughs> toilets. <laughs> To make and <laughs> to Saturn. Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I think that's enough of that. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. It's enough. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Good job. We, that we was tried, excellent. We tried. We tried, bad. We need some teaching. Now. No, I think that's good. No, and that's the first time you guys have really ever done that. And online is tough. So, you so know, in, in my is defense, tough. in my defense, he told me go and find questions. Go get questions. Come up with questions. So yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, I had to go online and find questions. Internet. <laughs> no, I, I I was bad about. I'm sorry. You, uh, we should have just Google, improvised I'm questions sorry. on the spot. So. <laughs> All right, so so you do before the pandemic, you you taught some improv classes and and stuff like that. So are you gonna do some more of that when when things open up or what? Uh, well, taking a step back, you know, we started Kidprov, which is the educational improv right. troupe in '91, and then in 2001 formed Himprov, which is a Christian improv troupe. And my church in in Carrollton Bentry Bible Fellowship uh, sponsored our a monthly show. And this year has, was was going to be our 20th year that we have ha had monthly shows. And we haven't missed hardly but one or two shows in those 20 years. Oh, wow. And then 2020 hit. Um, so in in con uh, connected to that are, is the uh, improv class that I teach. Mm -hmm. And um, don't know when that's ever going to happen again. On a, honestly, I just we just got to play it out. But... Right. Uh, I think I mentioned it before. What I what I love to do is to take the principles of improv, uh, the yes and, which is you know you you say yes to somebody and then your uh, responsibility is to respond to that person, uh, connecting to what they said, like I said earlier, um, but connecting those principles of improv to our walk as Christians. Right. Uh, just just a, a real simple thing is that the yes and becomes the surrender. And the serve part. So surrendering is vertical, and and serving is horizontal. So 
because faith without works is dead. Yeah. yeah. So this is a great opportunity for people to practice the yes and the surrendering to another person's idea right. and then serving them, making them look good, as we said before. Right. So how, what, what kind of skills and concepts of the empire can we take in the workplace, in our interpersonal relationships at church? What, what, how can we apply these things? Well, I think number one on the list is listening. I think uh, if it's 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 that connection, that collaborative approach to things. Right. Uh, we talked about the boxes, right? To me, you know, your box, my box, connect, um, and that's you know we're sharing those ideas. We're collaborating. Right. The the the, um, the synergy that happens. What comes out of out of just the two of us is much more than we could come out uh, by ourselves. Uh, come up with by ourselves. Yeah, so I think that listening, collaboration, communication. Sorry. Uh, I mean, it really goes just in, in just the humanity of of improv, if you will. Right. I agree, and and I didn't mean to cut you off there, but God brought a scripture to my mind. You know, in Ecclesiastes, it talks about uh, two is better than one. So that kind of plays into that. What you just said. So that's that's yeah, yeah. typical thinking there. Yeah. yeah, it is. And, you know, and some of the people that um, have taken my class uh, have really come out of their shells. Uh, they never thought they had any uh, important ideas. And, you know, when, back when we did the professor, um, you know, we said, why does Saturn have rings? Saturn has rings because and, you know, the word the and of and a yeah. are are not the funny words. No. But as I said about Sean, they set up the next person. And without those connecting words, the sentence makes no sense at all. And that, that kind of helps you with collaboration. If you're at work on a project, you can collaborate better. And I also brought this out on, on Sunday when we talked that um, maybe you'll be more comfortable with sharing your idea because you went through improv and you realize right. that valuable input, whether it's the but, and, or two, or whatever, you're adding to the the project, and and the project's going to come to a conclusion. And yeah, again, be better than you thought. Yeah, and, and not so the, afraid to to step out. You know, with um, what I do live stream, man. Every every live stream I have, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, and if I'm worried about what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do and what everybody's going to think about it. It's going to be a, a terrible live stream where I'm not going to get enough sleep the night before. But lately, I really just relaxed a little bit. And and to mm -hmm. be honest, you, Brad, every guest that I have on, on the one motivation, they teach me something. Right. And already right. the relationship that you and I have, we're starting to build it. And I really hope that we can build it some more. I, I really like talking to you. You're, you're a cool guy. You're insightful. Thank you. But I'm I'm serious. I, I I am too serious. My family says I'm I'm funny, but I'm not funny on purpose. It just happens. But I'm yeah, I, yeah. I'm and serious. that's the best kind of funny. And, and you taught me just just in the little bit of time that that I've had with you, you know that don't don't worry so much. You know, just go with it, and the Lord will will, you know, fill in the blanks. And if if not, then you know. And just keep doing it. That's kind of what, what you you taught me so far, you know. And it's like I've said a few times, being in the moment. And to me, um, being in the moment is what uh, heaven's going to look like. Because, you know, when you and I start thinking about heaven and about eternity, and, and it's like, okay, I'm going to be bored within the next, with, you know, within 15 minutes, I'm going to be bored. Uh, because you're looking ahead. Um, and that's going to create the anxiety or the frustration. But if we're in the moment, because we're going to be in, yeah. in the presence of, of God, we're in the moment, we're just totally focused on now, then time is yeah. goes away. Um, there's an author, uh, Cheek Sent Me High. I know it's a weird name, but he came up with the idea of, of flow. And flow is that moment that you, and it could be anywhere. It could be mowing the lawn or doing improv, that right. you are totally so focused in the moment that time just becomes nothing. and you know, in our improv shows, we, it's like, it's over already. I mean, yeah. we're having, we're so focused. And then it's like an hour later, hour and a half later, it's like, what happened? You know, it just, so I, I'm not scared of heaven and it's, right. and eternity because of the way I've thought through that. 
uh, uh, Brian has said, let's bring in some comments on you guys. Uh, let's bring you guys into the conversation a little bit. So if you had something you want to add, a question that you, you want to ask Brad, I'm sure he will not have an answer, but he will improv it for you. I will make it up. Well, I see that yeah. Brian said he came he came out of his shell during the class. Brian and, and his wife, Shelly, took my classes a few times. Shelly doesn't have a shell, which is funny because her name is Shelly. That, that, that's that's that doesn't make, she is so out of her shell yeah. all the time. I love it. I love it. But Brian, um, yeah, he was—he struggled at first because um, he was thinking too much about what he was going to say or how he would look. And you know, when you're when you're stuck inside your head, yeah, then you're not going to go anywhere um, because you're thinking about yourself rather than the other person. And so he just he came along, and you know, then after a couple classes where he just let his guard down, if you will, uh, he did great stuff. In fact, he completely fooled himself. He he surprised himself in because something would happen and he would be like, Whoa, did, did that really you know, did that come out of me? And it's like, you got it. That's that's awesome that you get give confidence, you know, and mm -hmm. absolutely value to what you had to say. And that that's good, man. I, I, I can sit here and talk to you all day, and that's a good thing. I know you probably got things to do.